Are you blessed and highly flavored? <laughs> oh, glory. Did you get touched this morning? Are you refreshed? Isn't there anything greater than God's presence? <laughs> Nothing. There isn't anything that can fill, fulfill you at all. I don't care how much cash you got. I don't care how many material things you got. I don't care how many girlfriends or boyfriends you got. Hopefully there's only one. <laughs> but nothing can fulfill you like God's presence. That's why he says forsake not to assemble. That's why so many things are happening to people because you know what they're doing? They're forsaken to assemble. We need to be alive with the fire of God. And you're not going to get that by sitting home. And you're not going to get it by just reading your Bible. The word says the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Why does the letter kill? Because you ain't got the spirit. There's so much religion and false doctrines and so much garbage out there. But when you get in the spirit of God and you're connected to the throne of God, the spirit says, I will tell you all truth and I'll tell you things to come. Then why don't people know things to come? Because they lack the spirit of God. That's why people are getting and all the other stuff out there because they got no idea what the heck's going on. They're trusting in man and not God. And now people are dying left and right from being... Why? Because it is a marker of the beast. Not the mark, but it's a marker of the beast. And it's causing problems. Anybody's received a... You need to repent and ask God for forgiveness and break that curse off of you. It's essential. Well, my doctor says so. Your doctor is carnal. You got a true doctor called Jesus. If you were led by the Spirit, you'd know what the heck's going on. It's a lack of God's presence. And that's what the enemy wants in individuals' lives. The lack of God's presence. People say they trust God, then why do they do stupid things? They move ahead of God. They run at a phone instead of the throne. It's time right now. Listen, God is doing a tremendous work. He is cleaning up the church. He's breaking the walls of denominations. And he's unifying us. You know, it's unfortunate we got to wait for chaos and troubles for people to come together. The lack of God's love is because of the lack of God's presence. Because that's where the fullness of his love is, is in his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, tell him this is your day. <laughs> It's a new beginning. <laughs> I have a message. <laughs> you know, we're in a time right now where we're seeing the demonic forces of Satan's kingdom being exposed. Amen? Because they know time is short. And so you're seeing this is a global exposure. God has still got the last say. He knows everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen. He's got a plan. It's called grace. God's plan is the grace of escape. Amen? It's not unmerited favor. God ain't going to favor everybody. You earn God's favor. Grace is God's plan of escape. Came with the fullness of grace, the fullness of the plan to escape. And, and so in this right now, he is preparing his church so that he can come through the church, his body, and express himself to the, king, to the world. But right now, there's an exposure. There's a shaking and quaking. It's going to happen. It's got to happen. We are actually seeing, and we're going to talk about this not today, but arising the fourth kingdom of the powers of darkness through the bloodlines of the satanic realms. And out of that fourth kingdom will become a fourth horn. And out of that horn will come the son of perdition known as the Antichrist. It's being established now. Right now. Hallelujah. We are in what we call the battle of the beasts. One world government ruled by Satan is their hope. Worshipped by hosts of human souls. Fallen angels and unclean hybrid spirits. 
You see it all over. They've infiltrated in every area, government, medical, you know, education. Education has turned from education to indoctrination. Trying to force things on our children. Lies, 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 because everything is associated with the father of lies, known as Satan. When people truly get an understanding that Jesus didn't come to bring religion, because the word religion actually means bondage. He is the Lord of hosts. That means he's the Lord of the army. He came to establish a military on earth to restore what Adam lost. Because the battle is continuous. We are in an eternal fight right now. You were born in a war. Every one of us. And we've got to learn to fight. Because if you're not in a battle, you become a casualty. And there's so many people that don't know how to fight. Jesus paid the price, gave us the king, keys of the kingdom to abide and lose. They don't even know how to use them. This booklet called Penetrating Booklet. It's a prayer booklet. And here's keys to use. You speak these things, you find life's change. These prayers are given by God. God wants to arm every individual to learn how to fight. Because many people can't take the word of God and learn how to fight correctly. But as they begin to fight and battle and get more in the spirit, then the interpreter, the teacher, the comforter, will begin to teach him what the Word of God means correctly. Not by human interpretation, but by the Spirit of the living God. It's a total different thing. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, Let's speak it together. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Is it the latter times? I always call faith as forever attached into the heavenlies. F-I-T-H. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and what? Doctrine. Doctrines of demons. Deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons. Say it with me. Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, is that what's happening all over? Yeah. People are, they're falling from the faith. In other words, they're falling from the relationship. They're compromising the relationship. Hallelujah. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Three, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. <laughs> this area of breaking away, they are breaking away from the practice of truth. They're breaking away, they're being disconnected from the eternal promises and losing their hope and faith in a future. They broke away from a close relationship with the Lord and with His Spirit by allowing deceptive doctrines and false promises to enter their heart and their mind. They are no longer sanctifying the Word of God in their heart and His promises. They are exchanging faith for flesh. I'm going to say that again. They're exchanging faith for flesh. They're beginning to rely on themselves, which brings a curse. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want everyone to say something with me. Faith claims his promises. Without faith, there's no promises. You must have faith. Amen? Faith is the currency of heaven. You can't buy nothing without faith. It's like eternal Bitcoin. Faith is the currency of heaven. You don't buy nothing without faith. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Good. You didn't run out yet. Woohoo! Verse 1. Let's speak it. 
I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they not endure sound doctrine. Are we there? Everybody in here knows somebody that's drifted away. Fallen away. Not being fulfilled. Not fulfilling their call and purpose. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables, to Biden doctrine, Obama doctrine, Clinton doctrine, Antichrist doctrine, they're all the same. Unable to endure pressure <laughs> during disappointments. Delays or discouragement. Not willing to let patience have its perfect work. <laughs> and not reaching the level of faith that claims God's promises. See, this is the enemy's plan. He'll do anything he can. Look, at, he doesn't care if you become a Christian. He doesn't care if you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I mean, if he can prevent that, he would. He'd rather kill you beforehand. But it's afterwards, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whether you're a danger to him or still to yourself. There are so many carnal, what they call Christians, because of the lack of God's what? Presence. They're not worshipers. They're readers. But they don't have enough faith to proclaim God's promises. Hallelujah. James chapter 1. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. James chapter 1 and verse 2. Faith claims his promises. That's today's teaching. Without faith, you can't claim his promises. The word says, faith comes by hearing the word of God, not listening. There's a difference between listening and hearing. People that listen, you know what they do? They go, yeah, 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 I got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and then they don't do nothing with it. See, hearing bypasses your carnal. When you listen, there's a compromise there. Oh, maybe, because you're still reasoning with listening. But faith accepts it, believes it, and practices it. It's different. When you truly hear, you believe it, you receive it, and you put it into practice. That's called faith. Not putting it into practice is not faith. I hear people go, oh, I'm walking out in blind faith where well, you're an idiot. No such thing as blind faith. If God told you, you do it. If he didn't tell you, then it's, you don't do it. See, when people don't hear from God, then they walk out in blind faith. And you know what happens? They stumble. No such thing as blind faith. Faith allows you to see. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. My brother counted all joy when you fall into what? Various trials. Various trials knowing that they're the testing of your what? Faith. Oh, snap. <laughs> and it's what it's going to produce. Faith. Patience. That's called endurance. How many of y'all need endurance? Amen. Amen. But let patience have its perfect work. Let the, the endurance so that you may be what? Complete. Be what? Complete. Perfect and complete. Lacking what? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because you got faith to purchase. Come on, get this. You got what? Faith to purchase everything. You got faith to purchase your healing. You got faith to purchase prosperity. You got faith to purchase souls. It takes faith that is the currency of eternity. Oh, snap it. Everybody okay? He says here, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without reproach, and, and let him give it to him. But let him ask in what? Faith. So when you ask, you know you got it. With no doubting. 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let him not that man suppose that he's going to receive anything from God. Why? Because faith purchases. He's double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. You know, many people go by how they feel. They're emotional givers, they're emotional receivers. They do everything about how they feel. Oh, it doesn't feel right. Hell doesn't feel right, but it's real. <laughs> Everybody that's there is a believer. There's not one person in hell who don't believe. They might have not believed, which got them there, that was a qualification. But when they got there, man, they believe. But they can't get out now. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4. So that means you must claim his promises by faith. Second Corinthians 4. You know, we hear a lot about faith teachings and preachings and whatever. And, and, and I've taught many times in faith. But this morning, the Spirit said to me, listen, my people got to know that faith is the currency of heaven. They got to know that without faith, I can't release anything to them. And you know, one of the things is, is that if you're truly walking in faith, then you're walking right with God. You're not touching unclean things. You're sanctifying the Word of God. You're staying separated. You're sanctified from the world. It's amazing how many people corrupt themselves by their own phone. They get on Fleshbook. And they get fleshy themselves. They take more pictures of themselves than they did their whole life. I've never seen so many portraits of people. <laughs> Who the heck wants to see you? We want to see Jesus. Amen? Oh, this is what I did today. I don't care what you did today. I want to know what Jesus did today. Bunch of flesh book. Soulish, emotional. And everybody wants to tell everybody's problem on flesh book. Oh, shut up and bring it to the throne. Exchange it for the good things of God. Everybody's going through it. That word go through is wonderful. Don't just stay there. But if you keep promoting your own struggles, you're going to stay there. Verse 7, please. Speak it with me, if you may. But we have this what? Treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. For we are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Wow, that's awesome. We're hard pressed. We're challenged like never before right now. Like never before. We're challenged mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. But without faith and revelation knowledge of Christ, we can't go any further. We will not have victory. And those who are not in him, following him, will fall away into great deception. And we're seeing many fall away in great deception. I mean, everybody here knows, even some of your own family members, you try to red pill them and they can't get it. That's all they want is the blue pill. And that blue pill is a trance. It cover, it's veiled. They are veiled. They can't see. They can't receive. They have to hit enough walls so where it gets bounced off. They got to come to such a place of destruction, some of them, to where the only thing that they have is to look up. They believe their wealth is going to rescue them. They believe that their wisdom is going to rescue them. This is all carnal wisdom and knowledge, but not revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is from the throne of God. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 verse 1, please. Let's speak it. Now faith is what? The substance. What is that? Currency. Heavenly currency. Of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. 
For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made of things which are not visible. Which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. This is all done in obedience. Remember God told them and they believed. And they did it. That's called faith. Through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he, being dead, still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he what? He pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of the things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Can you imagine Noah? Come on. Building this huge ark, taking him for a long time to build. Everybody laughing at him. Especially you got all the Nifflins walking around on the earth and all the giants and having to battle them. Probably tr trying to steal his wood. You know? I mean, he had to put a hedge of protection around the ark. What are you doing? You know, when the Lord said, hey, Noah, build an ark. He said, what's an ark? <laughs> he said, I want so many cubits. He said, what's a cubit? <laughs> Noah didn't know nothing. God had to plan it all out for him. And he believed. And he built an ark. And now everybody's laughing at him. Look at this dude. He's building an ark and it's on his front lawn. What the heck? And then the heavens opened, the earth shook, and the floods came. And Noah was in the ark, shut the door, opened the window, went, hi. <laughs> See ya. You should have believed too. See, that ark is also representation of what's getting ready to come. It's called the rapture. God is preparing. Hopefully you got your ticket. Nobody gets in there without a ticket. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Remember, faith is the what? Purchasing power. It is the currency of heaven. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are what? Yes, yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who established us with you in Christ Jesus has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a what? As a guarantee, because his promises are yes and amen. But the word says something, after you've been obedient, he'll release the promise. See, so he tells you things to do. Promises are released. There's certain assignments that you and I are required to do. That's why we're to seek him every day. Lord, what do you want me to do today? And there's a process of sequences of assignments when a promise is released. So there will be things that he's asking you to do, and if you're faithful with them, at a certain period of time, a promise will be released. A promise will be released. And as you complete that, and then he puts you on another assignment. But all of these trials and tribulations is a change more into his image and likeness. Did he trust his son? Jesus. Did the Father trust Jesus? Yes. He sent him, didn't he? Jesus received all the promises because he was faithful. He was obedient. He was fulfilling the requirements for the promises to be released. In fact, he fulfilled the greatest requirement, death on the cross. And the promises released of salvation opportunity to every human. And to maintain that salvation, he released grace, which was the plan. Amen? Praise God. Hosea 4. Hosea 4, 6, it says, 
My people are destroyed for what? Lack. Lack of knowledge. Everybody knows that. This is called revelation knowledge. There's a lot of people that get knowledge. You can go to the library and get all the knowledge you want. You can get knowledge how to build a car. You can get knowledge how to destroy a car. You get knowledge how to build a bomb. You can get knowledge to do anything. Amen? But there's revelation knowledge that comes from the Father. That's that same revelation knowledge Peter got when he said that Jesus was the anointed one, the Christ. That's what changes a heart. That's what changes a person. Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge will also increase faith. And in this, he said, my people are destroyed. See, this is where people are drifting and breaking covenant with God. They still claim to be Christians, but they're not walking in true faith. They're not connected. They're disconnected. They don't love God's presence. Oh, they say they do, but they don't show it. If they did, they'd be in presence worshiping. See, that takes denial of self, doesn't it? Amen. Oh, I just sit home and read my Bible. You just go ahead. And you ain't no threat to the devil. Because there ain't no anointing on you. Remember, the word says that the anointing is what broke the, ch uh, the gates of hell. It's the anointing. The anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Without the anointing, you and I are nothing. I don't care how much. I don't care if you can remember the page numbers. You can tell the devil all the locations of the scriptures too and he ain't going to budge. That's when the word becomes a seed and not the sword. The word only becomes a sword by the Spirit of God. That's why it's called the sword of the Spirit, not the sword of the letter. Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. A lack of revelation. See, revelation knowledge will also bring us closer to his presence. And when you're closer to his presence, faith will increase and you'll have more faith in his promises. Second Pete chapter 1 and verse 2. Second Pete chapter 1 verse 2. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it please. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge of God. Is that revelation knowledge? Yeah. And of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. To the knowledge of him, which is revelation knowledge, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hmm. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control or control over self, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, Faith claims his promises, which allows us to partake in a divine nature that overcomes human nature, moving us into a position of victory all the time. All the time. You don't lose the battles. See, there are battles that are ours, and there are battles that are his, and there are battles that we share. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 3, let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, that's where you be. 
you're in there, man. If you're right with God, you're in there. If you're in there, you're above all things. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame. That qualifies you for that position. Before him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times which we are coming to, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in, on earth in him. In him also we obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. We're blessed every spiritual blessing that's associated with eternal promises. You and I have access to everything by faith. Of what purchases the things of eternity and the promises of God? Faith. It is the currency of heaven. And James chapter 2. James 2.14 please. What does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith? but does not have, that works means obedience. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warned, be warmed and filled. <laughs> but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus, also faith by itself, if it does not have works or obedience, is what? It's dead. But someone will say to you, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works or by my what? Obedience. Amen? You believe that there's one God, you also, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. <laughs> But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without obedience or works is what? It's dead. <laughs> Colossians 3. Colossians 3. We are in a time right now of so essential, so essential. I'm really, um, I'm really grieved in the area of so many people being taken out of faith, taken out of position, taken out of divine order. Walking away from their call and purpose. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Again, lack of God's presence. Well, there's lack of God's presence, there's lack of faith. Verse 1, please. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, your minds, your desires on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For if you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ also is our life appears, Christ is our life appears. So you don't have a life no more, it's his. Then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on a new man which is renewed in the knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Revelation knowledge. According to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Jew nor Greek nor circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and is 
in awe. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called, in one body, and be what? Thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know, most of the time you wake up with a song in your spirit. Man, sometimes I'm trying to go to sleep and my spirit's still singing. I got to tell it to shut up. Be quiet, will you, man? Let's go to sleep now, Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't need the praise and worship songs. Let's do something easy, you know, so I can go to sleep. <laughs> don't let the enemy of flesh disqualify your faith. We are in a time where the global kingdom of darkness has become revealed and exposed. Their agenda is becoming more apparent, and many are awakening out of the great deception. But many have fallen into the deception. In Philippians chapter 2. Training for reigning. God prepares us for everything. If we're hearing. Amen. Don't, don't just listen. You must hear. When I, when I see people listen, it reminds me of those things that are in the back of a car, you know, that, those little toy things that are like the animal, uh, dogs, and, uh, they go up and down. That's what it reminds me of somebody when they're listening. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. How are you going to be like-minded if, if you're not assembling? Amen? Being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done with, through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness and in, of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross." Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, those in heaven and those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I just want to encourage you is stay away from the media. They're secular media is nothing but prophets of Baal that lie and bring people into bondage. Hey, listen, I got to share something with you. I saw something really cool. My wife showed me. This guy got a visitation from these government officials. And, um, and, and what he does is he's a... He's kind of like a journalist. You know, a lot, a lot of people are on the internet now and uh, are exposing darkness and all kinds of other stuff. We got a visit from these two government agents. And uh, he, they said to him, listen, we know you. We know who you are, where you're from. We know every, all of your family members. We know everything. We know everybody that's associated with you. Uh, we know how many followers you have. And we're going to be talking to you. And we're going to ask you some questions. And he was kind of freaked out at first. He's thinking, what the heck? And all of a sudden the stock came in and he said, tell me then, who's the President of the United States? 
they both looked at each other and they looked at him and they, they said, Donald J. Trump, he said, I'll talk to you. And they released some information to him that he can't release. But he said, get ready, because they're visiting all of them, so that when, the when it's time, that information is going to be released to everyone. God will not leave us in the dark when things are getting ready to happen. Does everybody understand? When they said, who's the president of the United States? Man, I'm thinking, man, I wouldn't have thought that. That's cool. How are you going to find out who these guys are? Who's the president of the United States? Donald J. Trump. Powerful. Not Biden. They're all criminals. Amen? They're here to destroy the United States and be bring in a one global order to come under Satan's control. They've sold their souls. God have mercy upon them. Hallelujah. Verse 1. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by what? Various, Various trials. trials. That the what? Genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believe and you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the what? Salvation of your souls. Wow. Genuineness, faith, trust, and you're a claimer of his promises by faith. And I'm going to close in Jude. Jude 14. Faith claims his promises. Man, of all the times we need to be filled and strong in faith is now, let me tell you. We need to claim his promises. We need to kick butt. We need to take territory. There's a prayer in this penetrating prayer book called, um, what's it called? Saving, not Saving America. Uh, Army in America. Army in America. Army in individuals. You know, you can be out there talking to people. You can give them a Bible and they just don't know where to go with it until they get trained up. But you give them a penetrating prayer booklet and they can start right away fight. Jude 14. Let's speak it. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all. To convict all who are ungodly among them of all of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Sounds like the Democratic Party. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. In other words, they are not in faith. They're not connected. They claim to be Christians, but they, they're not walking in the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in what? Well, what's that mean? Praying in what? Tongues. Yes. Praying in tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternity. And have, and on some have some compassion, making a distinction, but on others with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and forever and forever, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.